The Ferdinands by Zorgan Peterson is a heavy combat ship considered by many to be the greatest PvP vessel in the game. Its unique retro styling has become a symbol for bounty hunting and one-on-one -on -one dueling galaxy-wide. This is a result of its manoeuvring capabilities, protection if shields are used, and generous hardpoint provision, with four medium on the upper hull, all with relatively good convergence, albeit with a noticeable gap, and a class 4 hardpoint on the underside. Class 4 hardpoints are not of great value in the AX domain, but the four medium hardpoints are great for Gauss, allowing for the maximum allowance of DPS. One point of contention many pilots raise is the cockpit layout with its off-centre seating. I personally very much like this interior and layout, one of my favourites. Maybe it's the use of VR, but to me there is no obstruction from the canopy beam, and visibility is excellent. The Ferdinance is fast, with a boost speed of 560 easily achievable while outfitted for AX, and relatively manoeuvrable, able to maintain an orbit and with great aiming mobility while boosting, although this falls off rather sharply when a boost ends, often leaving you chasing the target with your reticle. Without shields, the FDL suffers a lot in terms of protection, with extremely limited internal capacity. When all other components are in place, such as the repair limpet controller, AFMU and cargo rack, only one to two hull reinforcements will fit. The FDL also suffers from heat problems, Gauss fire could spike the temperature even with double banking of heat sinks. This could be helped a little by using a weapon focused power distributor, but that would sacrifice boost availability, which even with a charge enhanced distro is already not great. Fortunately, the ship features six utility slots, and so the additional heat sink usage is covered, but this can effectively double the material cost of heat sink synthesis. Let's see how the bounty hunter's choice does against the Thargoids. First, we face off against a Cyclops and Basilisk together. My first impression of the ship was that under boost it was very agile and easy to glide into position, but a lot of the ships can feel this way with four pips to engines, and once set for combat I did notice a sharp drop in aiming mobility while outside of the optimal throttle speed. Not enough to be a real detriment though, and against these targets only a few shots is needed to destroy a heart. There was some adjusting to get used to with the FDL's specific axes sensitivities as well. With this build, the heat spikes a little when using only one heat sink at a time. This has improved a lot when using two, but never completely eliminated. There is also a convergence gap between the two sides of the ship. Not a very big gap, but it does require slight adjustments to aim for each trigger group when using split gauss. This means that shots can miss quite often, especially while adjusting to the ship, and may end in the need to re-exert more than a ship with better convergence. My build is a shieldless repair build, as is common for me to use. 
It is recommended to use a shielded build to take advantage of the FDL's utility mount count for shield boosters. But I can manage without and prefer not to have issues with my system capacitor. When kept in the optimal speed, the aiming mobility is far better and far more stable. The FDL has no trouble at all in eliminating both Cyclops and Basilisk. The high top speed and high damage output makes for very fast work of the weaker interceptors. Next we face the Medusa. Will the need for longer attacking runs and greater incoming fire damage pose a problem for the poor protection of the FDL? For the tougher tier interceptors, Playing it by the book is the most sensible choice. Using flag to eliminate the swarm and attacking with a slow and controlled orbit. Again, I am using single heat sinks, which does mean spiking the temperature, but the FDL can weather this level of fire and the class five repair Olympic controller will fix that up extremely quickly given the low overall hull. If you can keep this ship at the optimal speed during attacking runs, the Medusa is a comfortable target to engage. All in all, the Medusa was not a very troubling target for the FDL. The incoming fire can be reduced further by using double heat sinks, and that is something we would be doing against the Hydra. Now, I did actually go out and destroy a number of Hydra in the FDL in order to test a few approaches. I wanted to demonstrate that even without a shield, 
which would be the FTL's greatest defensive strength, it is capable of pulling off very difficult kills, and so set out to test both the standardised approach to cold orbiting, as we did with the Medusa, and a more extreme, flakless, basic ammo kill. The first run though was before I had even engineered the ship's hull and fitted module reinforcements. It was going great, but during the second half, I lost the canopy. I still went on to finish the fight, but I felt I owed the FDL a better performance than that, and so set out again. This time round, I had a better arrangement of module protection to strengthen the canopy, and was confident that the FDL would not let me down. As with the Medusa, this was all about settling into a nice controlled orbit and using careful changes in thrust vector to avoid fire where possible. Using premium ammo allows for a great deal of damage to be inflicted with four medium gas cannons, and so careful aiming is all that would be needed. The FDL performed very well and I will link the full fight at the end of this video, but I did pick up a few tricks. Using all four gas cannons on the heart is possible if you angle the ship so the weapons run along the long axis of the heart. The FDL has the damage output with premium ammo to make quick work of attacking runs. Double heatsink usage gets very expensive in terms of synth mats though. The final fight I wanted to try something a little less sensible. I do not recommend taking this approach but I wanted to see how the ship would fare. I decided to attempt a basic ammo only run with no flak. In order to maximise damage output I also intended to fire all gauss cannons at once for the whole fight. This is generally a bad idea beyond certain AX vessels, but when boost orbiting in the FDL which becomes necessary to avoid the swarm, the area you are weakest is the opportunity to land effective shots. 
the aiming mobility becomes very unpredictable flying this way and so landing your shots when you have the chance is extremely important. It would be no, not only spiking the heat, but taking outright heat damage a lot of the fight. I figured if the FDL could achieve this without shields, anyone looking to run a shielded build will have no problems. Instead of flak, I would be using a thermal vent beam to work down shields faster. The fight was progressing well under the circumstances, and even though basic ammo meant re-exerting most hearts at least once, I was surprised at how survivable the 1500 point hull of the FDL was proving to be. On later hearts, the attacking runs became easier. With this reckless flying style, damage is occurring all the time, so the shorter the attacking run, the better. And I could feel the victory was drawing near.
And so, even when flown in a way that goes against all good advice and the best practices of the AX community, the FDL is still capable of pulling off the toughest of Thargoid kills. As I said, if you fit a shield to this ship, you are gaining about 2,000 megajoules of protection on top of whatever hull you can engineer, so you will fare better still. The FDL is an interesting ship, one that I have become quite fond of. It has good damage output with only a slightly awkward convergence pattern, good speed and workable manoeuvring once you get used to it. I think the ship is more suited to an experienced pilot than a beginner, but if you want to take the FDL on a Thargoid hunt, you'll be in good hands.